punishments. <laughs> I was 31 years old, about ready to graduate from college, and I got my first demerit. I'm two days away from graduating from college. I got my first demerits in four years. I was so mad. <laughs> it was a hair check. I had, you know, I told him, I said, I'm going to get my hair cut today. My graduation is a Friday. He said, I don't care. It's too long now. You're getting demerits. I said, ah, 31 years old and getting demerits. Well, anyway, well, it's been good to be here. And I don't know about you, but as we played and you sang, did, you, did anybody besides me feel that? Okay. Okay. Some did, some didn't. That's fine. Um, there's, uh, we're going we're gonna, to we're gonna have some fun tonight, okay? Um, but I hope you learned something. And, and I'm surprised that you came back. <laughs> I'm thankful. Um, but let's go ahead, Brother Haley, and put, can you put both at the same time or just one at a time? One at a time. Put, put the first one up there then, wherever it goes up there. Okay, up there. <clears throat> um, This is the grace of God. This is the grace of God. You know, if you're taller, you could reach that. You want some help? Yeah. <laughs> okay. I, I flustered you on that one. <laughs> there goes my love offering. Uh. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Give him a hand. There you go. All right. Okay. And turn that on over there. This, as, as we're playing that, I guess it got to me because I thought about this. And I keep it, uh, this picture, a friend of mine, <laughs> he put it on Facebook of all places. And I saved it. And uh, both pictures, actually. And I had no idea these pictures were out there. But I, I, remember, I remember as they took the, the one picture, but I don't remember the other one. So we'll get this thing set up. And there we go. You want to turn off some more lights or, or that? It'll brighten up. OK. <clears throat> The guy on the right, Todd Southern, he was anti-establishment. He is a principal of a school now. <laughs> the guy straight down from him, Ted Ball, he, ended, he did end up being a professional pianist. Uh, I don't know what all kind of bands or whatever he played in, but um, he died a few years ago of cancer. The guy next to him, if you remember, his name is Tom Flynn. The skinny guy with glasses, the long straight hair, and the trumpet. Um, this is before I had an eight-piece band. This is a seven-piece. But he, if you remember this morning, I said, you know, we, we got this guy in the band, and he was clean, and he was everything, and our goal was to, well, he's the one. The guy on the left, that's Tom Daniels. Um, I've talked to him a few times. We've kind of kept in touch, um, and he has claimed to be saved. So, which I'm thankful for that. The guy behind him, kind of all you can see is his head, that's George Robbins. He had, a, he had an attitude problem. Um, we had to baby him along all the time. Finally, I, I got tired of babying him and I fired him. But um, his son plays in contemporary Christian rock groups now. Um, and he's very proud of his son, of course. Um, the guy sitting in the back, George Van Fossen, he was our trombone player, and I have no idea what's happened to him. The guy sitting behind the drums is me. And that was my band. Go ahead and put the second picture up there, please. And this is the one where, and, and I guess you did this a few weeks ago or months ago or whatever. 
This is the one where if you put it next to, oh, we're getting a psychedelic show here. If you put that next to a church concert, that picture next to it, you couldn't tell which was which. You, you cannot tell which is which. Pastor showed you some pictures like that recently from what he told me. And you cannot tell which is which. The Bible says we're supposed to come out from among them and be separate. It says we're not to be conformed to this world, but be transformed. We're supposed to be different. We're not supposed to be like the world. And so this is my eight. This is my eight-piece band. Uh, well, let's see. That's basically the same guys are in there, except the one that we had. Usually, you put the drums up on the back, and and everybody else would be on the front. But I switched it around because I was in charge of everything. That whole show, I did all the lighting. I did all. I did the whole thing. And so I was pretty much into that. We had a lead singer over there. The second guy from the right. His name is Mike Fuller. Mike, the next to the last time I talked to Mike, um, he called me up. I just got, I hadn't had been saved very long. Mike called me up. It's this guy right here, the second guy with the checkered pants on, kind of 1980s style there, 70s. Um, <clears throat> he, was, he was a few years older than me, and, and I got, I'd been saved a while, and I promised Sherry's dad that I would go with them, go with him to a church in uh, Indiana, I think it was, on a Saturday night. Mike called me up and said, hey, we have a job in a bar in Akron. And I said, I can't go. He said, what do you mean you can't go? I said, I can't go. He said, well, why can't you go? I said, because I promised a preacher that I was going to go to a church with him in Indiana on that Saturday night. I can't go. He got pretty upset with me, Mike did, and he threatened to kill me. He said, next time I see you, I'll kill you. I didn't see him for 20-some years. I avoided him like the plague. And, uh, but I finally saw him at a, at a Columbus Clippers baseball game. The Columbus Clippers were the farm team for the New York Yankees. And I saw him walk in front. My mom and dad was there. I'm pastoring by now. And uh, I said, Mom and Dad, remember the guy that threatened my life? He, they said, yeah. I said, there he is. They said, well, go talk to him. <laughs> I said, do you want to get rid of me that bad? You know? So for the whole game, I'm sitting there watching Mike and his girlfriend. He still was not married. And uh, I finally, the, about, the, about the last of the eighth inning, I got up and went down, and I tapped him on the shoulder. And he turned around and looked at me. We were winning, so it didn't matter. He turned around and looked at me, didn't recognize me. And, and I said, imagine me sitting behind a set of drums with long hair. You know? Gary, man? I said, yeah. He turned, he was glad to see me. And this is what he said. He said, he said, out of all of us, you were the first one that made any sense of his life. That's what he said. So I went from, uh, next time I see you, I'll kill you, to I'm the only one that made sense in, in our lives. So that, those are the pictures that I showed the teenagers at, at teen convention. By the way, Sherry was there that night. She was a backslidden teenager. And I think she was over on this side of the stage and, and all that, and her and the girlfriends. Because I remember Mike, or not Mike, but Tom kind of pointing you out. But I didn't, I didn't see any because at that night I was interested in some twins that were there. So anyway, <laughs> that's another story. <laughs> uh, well, you know, when you're interested in twins, one of them likes you, one of them don't. You just go with whoever. But anyway, that's the way it went. Okay, let's turn the, that thing off. Turn to 2 Corinthians chapter number 6, please. 2 Corinthians chapter number 6. The, <clears throat> my, um, my notes are very <laughs> scattered, um, but I, I remember the one name that I told you. I, I read the notes, and, and then I told you I'd, I'd give you his quote tonight, and I will. Um, but 2 Corinthians chapter number 6, I'm going to start reading at verse number 16. I oh, know, verse number, verse number 14. 2 Corinthians 6, 14. Go ahead and stay seated this time, please. Um, but verse number 14. It says, Be ye not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. For what fellowship... Now, now, listen to these questions. What fellowship hath righteousness with what? Unrighteousness. And what communion hath light with what? Darkness. 
verse 15, and what concord hath Christ with Belial, or what part hath he that believeth with an infidel, and what agreement hath the temple of God with what? Idols. For ye are the temple of the living God. As God has said, I will dwell in them and walk in them, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. Wherefore, come out from among them, and be ye separate, saith the Lord, and touch not the unclean thing, and I will receive you, and will be a father unto you, and ye shall be my sons and daughters, saith the Lord Almighty. Father, thank you for the day. Thank you for again loving us. I pray that you help me now have clarity of thought, and also that you would help me uh, with this message tonight. I know I'm unclean. I know I'm just a dirty vessel. So it's not me that is to be magnified, it's you. It's not my words that need to count, it, it's your words, your precepts, your commands, your principles. So I pray, Father, that you know, once again, we preachers are never worthy, but sometimes we're even less worthy to do what we do. But like Paul said, you know, I'm thankful that you put, called me, put, put, put me in the ministry. So I, I pray now that you help me to be a, a blessing and a help to these people. And uh, thank you for their kindness. Thank you for their, uh, their helpfulness and encouraging words. And I pray that you teach us again tonight. And I pray in Jesus' name, amen. After I got, after I got done preaching this message at teen convention, um, I got, my goodness, all sorts of comments, positive comments. I, I haven't received one negative comment yet. I <laughs> can't remember where I put it. Um, one person told me that I need to make a, a, like a, a set of DVDs about this. Because the, the ten, the ten part lecture that we listened to or listened to part of um, it was not put out by a Baptist, and there was some crazy doctrine in there that you had to be aware of and all that. Um, I got uh, the preacher, uh, Brother Gray, um, gave me the uh, many, not all of them, but um, some of the decisions that the teenagers wrote down. And uh, they gave me that. There was a letter that came to the church thanking the church for what they did for the teenagers, and one whole paragraph dealt with my message um, about, um, about music. Um, and so this, this message kind of picks up, kind of picks up where we left off from this morning. And if, I, if there's a title of it for titles purposes, it's, it's No Concord, No Concord. The word concord comes from the Greek word, and, and this is interesting, comes from the Greek word sympho, symphonesis. Symphonesis. Does that sound familiar? Does it sound like symphony? Symphonesis, okay? So the word concord comes from the Greek word symphonesis, and it means to be harmonious. Before I started preaching this message at the teen convention, I, ha I went to one of our piano players at the church, and I said, I said, I'm going to ask you to do something. I don't know if you can do it or not. And, and you could attest to possibly how, how difficult this would be. I said, I just want you to p pick a song, any song from the hymn book, and, but I want you to play it in two keys at the same time. I said, can you do that? She said, I think I can, I'll go into the room and I'll try. I said, okay. It was either that or have two people come out on the piano, one play in one key, another play in another key. Miss, uh, Miss I started to say Miss Duckett, uh, Miss Robinson, Mrs. Robinson came out and she was able to play a song in two keys at the same time. There was no harmony there. It was not in concord. It was not harmonious. And so it, it means to be harmonious or it means to agree. And of, and of course the word agreement down there um, 
in verse number 16, and what agreement hath the temple of God with what? Idols. Now, stop and think about all those statements, all those questions. Look back at verse number 14. Be not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. Okay, we understand that. Then it begins a series of questions. For what fellowship hath righteousness with what? Unrighteousness. Okay, answer that question. What fellowship has righteousness with unrighteousness? Is there any fellowship between those two at all? No. Can two walk together except they be what? Agreed. So in order for there to be fellowship, they have to be going, if you will, brother, the same direction, believing the same things, doing the same things. So you got righteousness over here and you have unrighteousness over here and there is no fellowship between those. Let's look at the next question. What communion hath light with what? Darkness. Darkness. Okay. How many of you have ever been in a cave and they turned out the lights? Been in a cave and they turned out the lights? I mean, it's perfectly pitch black. You can see nothing. You know, and they tell you, wave your hand in front of your, in front of your eyes and see if you can see it. And you can imagine seeing a shadow, but there's, it's not possible to have a shadow because there's no light. So there's no communion with light and darkness. There's no, it's either light or it's dark. Are, are you with me? You turn off all the lights in here and it's dark. Okay? You can't, if you turn on one light, there's no communion between light and darkness. It's either light or it's dark. Now, it may not be as light as what you want it, but the, but the presence of light means the absence of darkness. So there's no communion there, okay? And then verse number, verse number 15, what concord, how, how, how harmonious, harmonious, uh, harmonious is Christ with Belial? Is there any concord between Christ and Belial? Yes or no? Absolutely not. There is not one little bit of harmony between Christ and Belial. There's not even one, there's not even the size of a grain of mustard seed. Are you with me on that? There's nothing, there's no, there's, 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 there's nothing there. What agreement hath the temple of God with what? Idols. Okay. Well, okay, <clears throat> the, the, the Bible is very clear, the Ten Commandments is very clear that you're not to have any graven image of anything, okay? That, and, but, okay, well let's, well, let's just go ahead and set up a, 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 just one. Let's just set up one idol right here. Right here. What agreement hath the temple of God with what? Idols. Is there any agreement with the temple of God in idols? Yes or no? Absolutely not. Okay. Now, when you, okay, <clears throat> I, I mentioned some things this morning. Christian rock and roll. Do those agree? No. I told you this morning who the great, great grandpa, grandpappy was of rock and roll, and that's voodoo. We were in Haiti a few years back, and we were staying in a missionary's house in Port-au-Prince, <clears throat> and the, next to him was another missionary, and on the other side of them was a, was a compound, was a Lutheran church compound. And for two or three days, in the Lutheran church compound, Voodoo drums is pounding and pounding and pounding and pounding and pounding. They were trying to bring in the voodoo and mix it with Christianity. The two don't mix. There is no agreement between Christ and Belial. There is no agreement between the temple and idols. There is no agreement between good doctrine and false doctrine. A little leaven leaveneth the whole lump. Are you with me? There's no such thing as Christian rock and roll. There's no such thing as Christian, and I said it this morning, there's no such thing as Christian pornography. There's no such thing as Christian adultery. 
Well, if it's done in a Christian way, if it's done in Jesus' name, then it's acceptable. Not at all. Not at all. You can't, there is no agreement between Christ and Belial. There's no concord there. There's nothing there. There's nothing that God says it's all right for you to sin a little bit. It's okay for you as long as you do it this way. No, sin is sin. It doesn't matter. You, you, can, you, can, you can drink vodka as much as you want to in Jesus' name. It doesn't matter. There is no, there is no such thing as Christian social drinking. Are you listening to me? Look, when I got saved, the first thing I quit doing was the drinking. Because I knew it was wrong. And I knew it was wrong before I got saved. Amen. So, go down the list. Christian lying. Christian lying. Christian gossip. Christian hatred. Christian emulations. Here's a good one. Christian witchcraft. Is there anything in any of those that agrees? No. And, you, and you're not saying no just because you're trying to agree with me and trying, you know, you're, you're saying no because common sense tells you that those things don't go together. It's like I try to put on a certain tie with a certain shirt. My wife says, that doesn't go. <laughs> okay, dress me then. <laughs> Because I'm colorblind. You know, I was in the Navy. I wanted to be, I wanted to be a uh, air traffic controller and all that kind of thing. And they, they, they held up this round thing with a bunch of dots in it. And they said, tell me what number's in there. I said, what number? They said, no, tell me what number you see. I said, I don't see any number. They said, you're lying to me. I said, no, I'm not. I'm not lying to you. I don't see a number. And they're all the different colored dots, you know, and different sizes. They're supposed to, there's a number in there. I could not see the stinking thing. So for me to wear a tie with a shirt, I just keep the stupid thing tied and hang it with that suit. Amen. But every now and then, I still get confused with the shirt and the tie, even though it has blue in it. That blue doesn't go with that blue. And I... <laughs> But there's no agreement, none whatsoever, zero, zilch, nada. Yes, I listen to Rush Limbaugh occasionally. Nothing. There is no agreement at all. God doesn't say to teenagers, if you want to listen to a little bit, it's okay. Because I showed you this morning that rock and roll music is a direct descendant of voodoo. Voodoo is nothing more than opening up their spirits, getting so wrapped up in the beat. There's no, there's no instruments with it. It's just drums pounding. It's just percussion type instruments in voodoo. That's all there is. And then, and then they, they start some chanting going on. And they chant, listen to this, the same thing over and over and over and over and over. Kind of like in these praise and worship services. Oh, I touched the, I, I touched the golden calf, didn't I? We'll get back to that, because this whole thing tonight is about cr contemporary Christian music. None of these things agree. The Bible says in, in Romans 12 to be not conformed to this world, but be you transformed through the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good and perfect and acceptable will of God. Are you listening to me? So over here you have the things of God, over here you have the things of Satan, and there is no agreement whatsoever with either side. Satan does not, never agrees with God, and God is never going to agree with Satan. Are you listening to me? There's no concord, there's no agreement, there's no contract, there's no, okay, you can do a little bit of this. There's none of that. When God says, thou shalt not, that's exactly what God means. Now, I've added some things to this in case you, yeah, okay. <clears throat> Contemporary Christian music. I don't know where the, where's, where's Pastor at? Where's Brother Haley? He's around here somewhere, I know. Oh, he, he, he went back to the house, went to sleep. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, just kidding. Okay. 
Uh, oh, oh, let's see. Oh, probably, you, you, you come on up here, come on up here. We are contemporaries. We are contemporaries, come on up here. You're used to being up on the platform, I know you are. We are contemporaries, okay? Now we look different, act different, all that kind of stuff. And uh, my wife doesn't confuse which one is her husband. And all, you know, I mean, okay, we're different, but we're contemporaries, which means we're alive at the same time doing the same kind of things. Are you with me? Contemporary, con contemporary Christian music is music that is based after today's kind of music. And all it is, thank you, all it is, is an, is, it is an appeal to young people and to some old geezers who like rock and roll music. I call all the guys and all the young ladies that get, get involved in contem contemporary Christian music, I'll call, I call them flunkies. The reason I call them flunkies is because they couldn't make it in the real world, so they had to make up this other world. And their abilities are just good enough to give them a name. But you put their picture up on the wall next to some of the groups and things that I mentioned this morning, and you cannot tell the difference. Many of these churches that have contemporary Christian music, if you, they, they might have a large crowd. They will have a large crowd. I, I guarantee it. We brought a rock and roll band in here. We would have a large crowd. How do I know that? Because my rock and roll band years ago was asked by the Catholic Church to come in and play our music to their kids, and we packed that place out. Did they come back for the mass the next day? No. But they came to the music. The United Methodist Church down the street from there, they, they, they hired my band to come and play, and we packed that place out. <laughs> did they come to the services the next Sunday? No. But they did come for the music. If we, were to, if we were to get a band up here, I guarantee you, you'd have to knock those walls out. You'd have to knock those. You'd have to build a different building. But if you also, you built your church on that, and then some guy comes in and says, hey, we're going back to the traditional hymns, that place would empty out in a heartbeat because their religion, their Christianity, is not based on this book, but their Christianity is based on a shallow vision of Christianity and the music. That's right. Amen. I know a young man right now, his first name is Joe. Won't say the last name. He was an independent fundamental Baptist. <laughs> was. He got messed up on what Bible to use, and that's where it always starts. Yeah, amen. I'll get back to Joe here in a minute. There was a, there was a well-known independent fundamental Baptist church down in Florida. I won't tell you the city. All of a sudden I heard that they got rid of the King James Bible and they were having a rock band playing for their teenagers. That goes hand in hand. You get rid of the Word of God, you don't have to worry about it. You can have any kind of music that you want to have. Are you, are you with me? You listen to me. Now, <clears throat> so the, I looked it up on the website. Sure enough, there was on the Saturday night was the band for the kids. By the way, when my band was playing in that Catholic church, I knew it was wrong. When my band was playing in that United Methodist church, I knew it was wrong. If my band had been hired by a Baptist church to come in and play, I would have known it was wrong. We laughed about it. Yeah. We guys in the band, we laughed about it. And because, listen to me, because they hired my band to come and play in their churches, I was turned off to Christianity. Yes, sir. Come on. I don't want to have anything to do with it. Bunch of stinking hypocrites. They know this music is wrong. We know this music is wrong. We didn't change any of the words. We didn't change nothing. 
we got done, we, got, we, we packed everything up, we went back to the house, and we're laughing about it. Christianity was nothing. So I stayed unsaved for quite a few years until I met her mom and dad. Now, I'm not going to go into all that. But contemporary Christian music, they're trying. Okay, come here. And, oh, let's see. Somebody else here. It's another young, young, young man. I always use Michael and Dylan. All right, in the white shirt. I'm sorry. Yeah, come on up here, bud. Yeah, you two, and, and I can't remember your name. Come on up here. Yeah, you three. Okay. You're standing in the middle. Okay. You're on this side of him, and you're on this side of him. Okay. Now, you grab his, his arm. Not his hand. Boys don't hold hands with boys. You grab his arm. Okay. R real strong. Real strong. Both hands. Put both hands on his arm. Both hands on his arm. All right. There you go. You didn't know. Okay. Okay. This is, I'm trying to figure out how I'm going to illustrate this. <laughs> I got it started, now I got to figure it out, okay? This, 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 okay, this is contemporary Christian music pulling at, go ahead and pull at him, just start pulling as hard as you can, just go, go ahead and pull, just go ahead and pull, pull his arms out of the socket, I don't care, just pull there as hard as you can, I mean, come on, pull, 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 wrestling, man. okay, this, this is what's happening with contemporary Christian music, they're trying, they're trying to wrestle, they're trying to wrestle and bring together, although they're trying to tear him apart, so that's a poor illustration, I didn't think it through very well, but they're trying, to, they're trying to pull together the things of, of, of the devil and the things of God, and the th the, they don't mix. You can't do it. It doesn't work. Are, are, you with, are you with me? Well, we need to reach the young. You can stop now. He's, he's going to get tired. Go ahead and sit down. I messed up. But anyway, the, the, it, it's not going to work. It is not going to work. It is not going to work. It is not, there's no concord between, between Christ and Belial. There's no agreement between the temple and idols. You don't have a temple and, and put up an idol in there and, and, and you let some people worship the idol. You know, I was, at a, I was at a Catholic wedding one day and my mom and dad was there as my cousin's son or whatever it was and, and they're getting married. And, and I'm a Baptist preacher at a, in a Catholic church at a Catholic wedding. And it came to the point of the time after they said, I do, they said, well, the young couple's going to go over to the statue of Mary and they're going to pray to Mary and ask for her to bless their, their wedding. And my mom and dad sitting right beside me. They, I'm, I'm, I'm sitting over here. Mom and dad sitting over here. They start going like this. <laughs> Looking at me. You're not going to say anything, are you? <laughs> You're not going to do anything, are you? <laughs> I was so tempted. I wanted to stand up and say, don't do it. She can't hear you. She is not the mediator between Christ and man. Only Jesus is the mediator between Christ and man. Are you Between God and man. Listen to me. We, there's no agreement between the temple of God and idols. None whatsoever. Yes, no. And so for them to try to put together Satan's music with God's music doesn't work. Right. First time I preached this message, I preached it at a boys' boarding school. Bunch of rebels in that thing. That's why they're at the boarding school. So I asked them, I said, okay, if you have a little bit of, let's say you have good music and you put bad words with it. How many of you think, well, that would be bad? Well, I'll raise their hand. Well, yeah. Good music, but with bad words. That's bad. Okay. I said, okay. Good music, bad words. Okay. I said, okay, how about this? How about, <clears throat> how about bad music with a little bit of Jesus thrown in? How many of you think that would be bad? And they raised their hands. Even rebels know that you don't put together bad music with a little bit of Jesus. Amen. Are you with me? What, what agreement is there? What agreement is there? There's none. Kit Kittleson. I made mention of that name this morning and I said I was going to read it tonight and here's where I read it. Kit Kittleson, and I don't, I've never heard of him. I looked up some things on the internet, found some quotes and whatever. But he played or plays in the band called Death. What a great name for a band. But it's actual, true. <laughs> the 
he played in this band, and he asked what he thought about Christian rock. And he was asked this in 2007. Kit Kittleson, Kittle Kittleson said this. He said, if you want to be a Christian, be it with all you've got. And if you want to be heavy metal, be it with all you've got. He said, if those people in the, Christian, in the contemporary Christian music really took their faith seriously and followed the instructions of the one they profess to believe in, they would know they're on a collision course with Christian life and teaching. He said, rock music, metal music has nothing to do at all in a Christian setting. A lost person knows that. A lost person knows that. I, I read this. I found this. I, I read it to a preacher earlier today, if I can find it. There was some, there it is. There were some kids of a missionary. And they left to go to Indonesia, Indonesia as missionaries. So these missionary kids and this, this sister, kid and their sister, took their contemporary Christian music with them to Indonesia. They had their music playing one day when a national person walked by and heard their music. He stopped in his tracks and he asked this. He said, why are you playing witch doctor music by which they call on Satan? Christian, contemporary Christian music. World music like the world's music today. A lost person knows. So why in the world are Christians getting so confused and getting so tangled up in contemporary Christian music? Let me read you some other things here if I can find them. What agreement? What concord? His name is My John Michael Talbot. I have no idea who he is. He's one of the early contemporary Christian music guys, I guess. This is what he said. He said, I'm feeling the presence of Mary becoming important in my life. I feel she really does love me and intercedes to God on my behalf. I am to tear down my sins in penance. Nothing about that statement is doctrinal whatsoever. But that's one of the contemporary Christian music stars. A guy by the name of John Gibson, he said contemporary Christian music needs to branch out a little more, get a little sneakier. Another guy said, I don't believe in organized religion. I'm not, a, I'm not a part of those born-again people. Those Christians going to heaven while other people go to hell. I'm not a part of that. It's one of their CCM singers. Another guy by, and, and played in the band called Common Bond. He said, we have to completely disassociate from anything people associate with religion. This is their stars talking. Do you have any of this at home? Another one, he said, we blast away at conventional Christian music. They compare their style to police and U2. Amy Grant says, I have a healthy sense of right and wrong, but sometimes using foul exclama exclamation point words among friends can be good for a laugh. She went on to say, premarital sex and saying no to rock and roll is due to some, part, some past sadness. No, saying no to rock and roll is not due to some past sadness. Saying no to rock and roll is due to the fact that it is demonic music used by the devil, and you know it is. Yes, sir. Look at any of the album covers. Listen to the words. Listen to the beat. Listen to the listen. Listen to the listen to the chords they play and and and, and, the, and their actions and everything else. I was flipping uh, through television one day and uh, I got on that one where you, you turn it to the one and then you turn 34, 35, 36, 37, all that stuff. And there was no sound going on, but I all of a sudden there was this concert going on. 
and, and they were doing, you know, all this stuff, and, and they were, hmm, 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 hmm. Okay, I can do it all. It was a contemporary Christian music concert. Didn't have the sound up. Just watching them reminded me of what we did. Thank God for the old hymns. Thank God for amazing grace. How sweet the sound. That saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found. It was blind, but now I... You can't beat that. And you also cannot take those words and put it with a contemporary style music. I was going into a store one day <clears throat> when I was pastoring. So this has been <laughs> a few years back. Pastored from 1982 to 1995. I was going in the store and it was Christmas time. As, as I was walking in the store where, where we always did our grocery shopping because Walmart wasn't around yet. Can you imagine a time without Walmart? <laughs> going in the store and, and the front of the store, out, outside, before you go in the store, there's, there's some people, I don't know what they were selling or doing something, but they had this music going. And it was, twas the night before Christmas and all through the house not a creature was stirring, not even a mouse. But it wasn't the usual way that you do it. They set it to rap music. To rap music? I could do it for you. But I'm not going to. It was the night before Christmas and all through that. But anyway, I ain't going to do it. I'm so tempted right now. <laughs> I'm not going to do it. In India, where's the guitar? In India, <clears throat> my first night, my first, not my first night, my second night in India a few years ago, I was preaching and teaching at a Bible conference to Bible college students there in India. Uh, this is tight. I don't know if I can get in there. Nope. Too tight, Dylan. Either I'm too big or you're too small. So I'll sit down. The college students in India have already been affected by contemporary Christian music. They've been affected by the hairstyles. They've been affected by how to how the dress. They were affected on how to play the guitar. I can't even do it. Just the way they strum it. There, there's a contemporary Christian music way of strumming the guitar. And I can't do it. So I got up there. I was supposed to preach first that night, but he changed it on me in the last minute. He said, Brother Man, could you preach first this morning? I said, okay. So, I knew exactly what I had to do. I knew what my message was. It had nothing to do with music. But I got up there because I saw how affected they were by contemporary Christian music. I looked at the young man who owned the guitar. I said, can I borrow your guitar? He said, sure. I said, okay. So I got up there and I strapped it on. Just started strumming. I started talking about music a little bit. I said, now let me show you how it's supposed to be done. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound. Sing it with me, it's, it's too high for me. That saved a wretch like me. I once was lost. But now I'm found Here's a new one for you Was blind But now I see I can't say it because my voice just tuned higher or something I just played Amazing Grace For the next two days 
guess who they asked to sing and play? Me. <laughs> there was just something about playing the hymns. Knowing the song and singing it. Just playing it the way it needs to be played. There's something soothing about it, even though you can't do it very well. There's something relaxing about it. There's something that you get a you get a you get a an emotion out of it. Now somebody could pick up a guitar and, and plug it into one of the amplifiers we had, turn it on about six and just start rocking out on the th on, on Amazing Grace, you'll get a completely different effect. A completely, totally different effect. And that music does not encourage holy living. How do I know that? Look at their pictures. Look at their pictures. Look at the rock concerts. I've had people tell me that go to their concerts, they said there's no difference in the crowd between the concert at a contemporary Christian music concert and a rock concert. There's no difference. He, what, what, I said, what do you mean? He said, they're smoking dope there just like they do at the rock concerts. Mm -hmm. And the reason that pastor in Albuquerque said that he started having more problems with adultery in his church when he let Christ, contemporary Christian music come in is because they would, they would rush towards the band and, and, and there would be a, a, a wife of this guy and a husband of this wife and they'd be standing next to each other and there was that physical contact that came about and pretty soon they're hooking up and they're committing adultery. It does not encourage a higher standard of living. It encourages a, a worldly style of living and even a lower style of living. If you can't tell the difference between a rock and roll concert and a Christian and a con contemporary Christian rock uh, concert, a uh, concert, then then tell me what's the sense in going to church if there's no difference? Amen. Joe, you thought I forgot. Used to be an independent fundamental Baptist. He got messed up on the Bible, started using, not, it started, he, he put the King James Bible away pretty much, and he started using the ESV. Everything that he posts on Facebook at his church is the concert, yes, sir. the music, the lights, the smoke, all the effects are there. He never one time on Facebook said anything about preaching, never one time said anything about the Bible, never one time said anything about what he learned from Scripture, never one time, like you said, said anything about people getting saved. It was all about the music. The music, the music, the music. Take their music out of their church and the people will, will run like rats. His standards went from up here down the hill. And he put that stuff on Facebook as, 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 a, as a rub it in your face, look what I can do now. I finally unfriended him. So I'm sick of this. Tired of it. Because I knew when I was lost that stuff was wrong. Amen. There's a band called Striper. It used to be called Striper. It was one of the first times that people came out in, in spandex. Okay? Guys. In a complete spandex outfit with stripes. Striper. Christian rock and roll. I saw them. They were the band before the band I was there to see. I was lost. 
I listened to Striper, heard that they were Christian rock and rollers, and as a lost person, I said, that is wrong. I didn't know scripture. I didn't know anything about separation, but I knew music. I knew the lifestyle. I knew everything that goes along with it, and I said, that is not right, that is not Christian, and I had absolutely no respect for them. I made fun of them, just like I made fun of the churches that hired us to come in and play for their young people. Yeah. Well, yeah. And because of it, I, I might have got saved sooner if I'd have met somebody. One day I saw a young lady. Next day I went to her house. I heard her sister ask her dad a Bible question, which I had never heard in my life. Long story short, it was her mom and dad. Her dad answered the question. And because her dad answered that question, it got my attention. And I said, now here's a family that maybe really believes this stuff. It got my attention. The previous girlfriend that I dated, her, mo her mom and dad wanted me to go to church with them. I wouldn't go. I wouldn't go. And the reason I wouldn't go is because he'd go home just as drunk as I went home. There's nothing to this Christianity thing. You got rock and roll concerts going on in churches. You got guys who are big, who are big, uh, big wigs in the church and everything, and they go home drunk all the time. Yeah. There's nothing in this Christianity until I met her mom and dad. There's something different about this family. They acted the same at home that they did at church. Amen. They sang the old hymns at home just like they did at church. They were against rock and roll music. My first Christmas card I gave to them, I, my, I, was, I was so hurt. I was, oh. Her mom put all these Christmas cards, I don't remember if I remember this, put all these Christmas cards on the door and I'd, I'd given him my Christmas card. I said, well, where's my Christmas card? Why didn't she put my Christmas card on the door? My Christmas card had a peace symbol on the front of it. They didn't put my card on their door. Because the peace symbol was a broken upside down cross. This family stood for something. Are you, are you listening to me? What kind of music are you listening to at home? Someday your kids are going to grow up and there are going to be people interested in them and they are going to come to your house. Those young boys you've got right now, some girl's going to, ooh, I like him. He's saying, nah. <laughs> They're going to come to your house. Those, those girls that you have, young lady right there, someday, some boy's going to look at you and say, ooh la la. <laughs> Her face is turning red. <laughs> <laughs> ah, she's sleeping now. I have that effect. <laughs> but someday, there's going to be some young man come to your door. Will your music at home cause them to say there's nothing in their Christianity? Contemporary Christian music. I better put this back. I'll lay it down. That's where it falls down. <clears throat> Contemporary Christian music is nothing more, nothing less than what the ESV is to the RSV. It's just a regurgitation of the same thing. A Christian contemporary, a con contemporary Christian music, I always get it mixed up, <clears throat> is not Christian. One guy said this, he said, I'm not a preacher. I'm not looking to convert anyone. 
Striper concert and rock and roll show is indistinguishable, it said, from secular metal concerts. Another guy said, I sing those songs that set me free because kids want to rock. And these are your contemporary Christian music stars. Come up. Get your songbook out, please. I'm done. I'm well done. <laughs> I, told, I told the young people a lot of things, a lot more things. And, uh, but I'm, I'm being, it's already been almost an hour, so we've done enough. <clears throat> I want you to get your song books. I want you to turn to page number two. Page number two. Page number two. At the top of the book, right above the number, it says worship. The contemporary Christian rock people say, well, you know, our music is worship music. But if it's based on rock and roll, if it's based on rap music, if it's based on music of the world, it is not worship music. It's trying to, con it's trying to make a communion between light and darkness. It's trying to make an agreement between the things of God and the idols. It's trying to make a concord between Christ and Belial. And there is none. Amen. Amen. This song always affects me. Always. When they sing the Hallelujah Chorus, the tradition is that when you sing the Hallelujah Chorus, you stand. Because when the Queen of England heard the Hallelujah Chorus, Handel's Messiah, she knew who it was singing about. She knew she was the Queen of England, but she knew that they were singing about the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. So she stood in reverence and submission to the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. You can't get that kind of response with doesn't fit. So we're going to sing I don't know how many verses. But doesn't doesn't that pull yeah. right there? When you think of what you used to be and what he's brought you from. Then you look at the words, holy, 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 Lord God Almighty. It, it, just, it just gets me. So I'm gonna try and lead it. But if I can't sing it, it's okay. And if you can't sing it, we'll just ball our eyes out together. <laughs> okay. And if you feel like standing on this, I always do, then stand. But let's go ahead and sing verse number one. I'll try. Ready? Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty, shall rise to thee. Holy, 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 merciful and mighty, in three persons, blessed Trinity. Okay, here's, here's what we're going to do. You start us out, then just drop out. Let's sing it Acapulco. <laughs> Aca, acapella. Okay? Put all, the, put, all the, put all the parts in there. And as you're thinking about, as you're singing the words, think about the words. 
When I sing that verse, all I can imagine, Brother Haley, is the publican. Standing afar off and wouldn't so much as lift up his eyes to heaven and saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. When I think of his holiness and my sinfulness, I can't help it, brother. This song just grabs me. So we'll, we'll, she'll start it out. Let's do, oh, let's do verse number four, then we'll be done. All the parts now, ready? Holy, holy, holy. just now praising God? Amen. Were any of you just now worshiping God? Amen. Maybe you had an emotion, maybe you didn't. I did, as you can tell. It didn't take a set of drums. It didn't take wild music. It didn't take a repetition, 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 repetition. That's what voodoo does. They chant and 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 they work it up. And that's what voodoo does. So this praise and worship stuff, you know, I'm not against raising of hands because the Bible says raise holy, raise holy hands to the Lord. I'm not against that. But you don't have to work it up. All, we, all, he, all he said was, let's, let's, sing grace, let's sing Amazing Grace again. Yeah. I'm about to lose it up there just then because of the grace of God that's been so great in my life. I can't help but praise Him. I can't help but kind of fall apart and get emotional and my nose is running. Don't shake my hands. I've got snot all over them. But you don't need all that music to yeah. praise and worship. You don't need praise and worship teams. You just need people who love God and just sing the old, just sing the old hymns. That's all there is to it. One more verse and we're done. Verse 2. I like that one. <coughs> Go ahead and play all the way through this time. Let's just, let's just really sing it out. Right? Verse number 2. Ready? Holy, 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 all the saints adore Thee. <coughs> glassy sea, cherubim and seraphim falling down before thee, which word and art and evermore shall be. Father, thank you for the day. Thank you for loving us, for these good people. We're thankful. And I pray that some things were said today will be, a, will be a help and help us all to examine our own selves. Go home, check out our radio, check out what we listen to in the commercials, whatever. Get those CDs out of the house. And I, I pray that they'll take the challenge and uh, they'll see and begin to understand where all this music comes from. It comes from Lucifer, who, from what we understand, was kind of in charge of music in heaven. So it's no wonder, Father, that he has influenced our music 
and it's such a part, a big part of our lives. I pray now that you'll just speak to hearts and thank you for loving us in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, get all my stuff. Go ahead and be seated. Thank you. Amen. We're going to... I'm not going to keep you. We're going to dismiss. Amen. I believe God's going to work in your heart. We sang that song. and. Uh...